Greetings, everyone. I have a full cup of coffee, 700 emails, and today we're going to be reviewing your images. Before we do that, I need to mention that today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So if you're looking to build a website finally, put your images up where other people can see them, go to squarespace.com forward slash Nick Page and you can get started on your free trial. It's a good time to build a website because a lot of us have a little extra time. Before we jump in, remember that this is the opinion of one person and art is subjective. Art is personal and there's no right or wrong way to do art. Photography is art and I am just one guy spouting off some opinions. So don't take what I say as fact and don't think that I think that what I say is fact. You know, I'm just giving, I'm giving critiques on what I see and what I would choose to do different. And I'm just one person. And frankly, I don't matter that much. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Also keep in mind that there's a lot of value in watching the critiques of images that are not your own because you can apply those same kind of thoughts and ideas, or maybe you see some of the same mistakes being made in your own photography. So hopefully this will be useful. Even if I didn't get a chance to get to your image in this video, I'm going to continue doing these. So, you know, hopefully I'll get to your image as well. It's going to take a while though, because a lot of you guys submitted images. Let's jump into it. So this first shot is beautiful. Good job. This is from Joel. And what I love so much about this shot is the beautiful light, obviously raking in through the side. And when you have light, you know, beaming through and interacting with the, the landscape, it gives that sense of moment. You know, a lot of landscapes feel very static, but this has a sense of moment because of that light raking through the viewer knows that that light didn't happen for very long and just gives this beautiful sense of moment. I think my only critiques would be, we have some trees entering the frame down on the bottom left that aren't really adding to the shot. And I would like to see a little bit more color contrast. I think this shot would really benefit from just warming up some of this light that is raking through and kind of emphasizing the difference in color contrast. It would be really easy to do. I think the way I would do it, you could just duplicate this layer, go up to Adobe Camera Raw, and add a little warmth to this second layer, throw a black layer mask on there, grab a luminosity mask to target those highlights, select it, and then with a 50% brush, just brush that light in. There's no need to go overboard with it, but just by warming up those highlights a little bit, maybe we've overdone it, it's gonna create just a little bit of color contrast and it's gonna, anytime you have color contrast, it's going to just create a, a greater sense of depth to the shot, I think. Beautiful, beautiful shot. So this next image is from Craig. Looks like it's from the Canadian Rockies. And it's a beautiful scene. I really like the ice. I really like, um, you know, just kind of the visual path that the, the water is leading you down. I do like how it's been composed with the water leading into the bottom corner. But what I don't like actually is some of the processing techniques that have been used. This, it looks like a lot of micro contrast has been added, either with the clarity slider, maybe it's a texture slider in Lightroom, or if it was done in Photoshop, it looks like it was a high pass filter of some kind. So what that's done is it's made these trees appear a little bit extra crunchy, extra sharp. It's It's got so much texture and detail that it's, it's just a little bit harsh on the eye. So what I would like to see done differently is just to maintain the natural softness and not go too overboard with some kind of micro contrast, whether it's texture slider, contrast slider, or high pass uh, sharpening layer. You see, we have this running water and you can tell that it was taken with a fast shutter speed. I think a slower shutter speed would have been really nice and implied a little bit of movement in this water scene. The fast shutter speed here doesn't really work for me because there's no there's no motion being implied because that water is frozen in time. But if you drag your second about uh, if you drag your shutter speed about a fifth of a second or maybe a little slower than that, you're going to get a little bit of movement in that water and I think that's going to help draw the eye into the shot. I'd also like to see, you know, maybe the sky just darken down a little bit. The sky is the one area that's going to benefit from that contrast. And I think we could darken down that sky a little bit just so the eye gets to, you know, explore the bottom part of the shot a little bit more. This next image is from Brandon. 
We have a beautiful Star Trails shot. I really like the, I, well, first of all, I really like the length of time that you did your Star Trail image. I, I like that very impactful sky that we have going on. And I also like that you've maintained your shadow information, which is not always easy in these Astro shots. So a few things that I, I see that maybe could be done better is, first of all, when you're doing these Star Trails images, I personally prefer a lower contrast sky than I normally would if it was a typical Milky Way shot. You know, Milky Way, you're trying to bring out those stars and, and gases in the Milky Way and you're trying to make it really, you know, stand out. Star Trails images, when we have that much going on in the sky, it almost is an assault on the eye, right? Because there's just so much going on. It's got this big bullseye effect. If we have a high contrast sky, sometimes it's just overbearing on the eye. So I like to diminish the contrast. So it's just a little bit more laid back, a little bit more subtle. Oftentimes, I actually prefer doing star trails on nights where you have some moonlight. The moonlight helps illuminate the foreground, but it also kind of decreases the contrast in the sky. That way, you know, you're using a much lower ISO than you typically would. A lot of times I'm only doing star trail images at like ISO 500 because we don't need really bright stars. We just need, you know, implied stars, subtle stars. You know, they're going to be very visible by the time you stack them all together. So I would, I would diminish the contrast, diminish those highlights in that sky so it's not quite so eye grabbing. Also, we have, it looks like a plane running through the bottom corner of the, or the bottom corner of the sky. I would go through layer by layer and try to eliminate that. You can do, do that just by masking out layer by layer where that plane went through. I think you did a pretty good job with the foreground. I like that we have a brighter area deeper here into the shot that kind of draws the eye into the, into the composition. Um, maybe it's a little bit over bright. So I'd kind of back off some of that dodging that you did there. But mostly just, just try to not have your sky be quite so bullseye, you know, quite so demanding of the eye. Remember, night sky images are just like any other sunset. You want to have a strong composition too. You don't want the shot to be all about the sky. So this next shot is from Josh, another scene from the Canadian Rockies. Really beautiful composition. I like that he got up so close to this nice, you know, chunky ice that's off the edge of the lake. Definitely a very strong sense of atmosphere. And I think my biggest critique really is that maybe we've gone a little overboard on the sense of atmosphere with the glow that we have here. You've definitely done some Orton effect, especially to the background. I think we could maybe just back that off just a little bit. So it's not quite so glowy. It's coming across very, very glowy to me. And when I'm post-processing, I always try to ride that fine line between, you know, stylizing my image but not making those stylized things that I'm doing so obvious that people could tell what I did. I always want them to be left kind of trying to guess what I did. And here, I think it's a little bit obvious. The top left corner looks maybe a little bit over dark and the top right corner actually looks a little bit over bright. So I would try to manage those tones as well. But otherwise, very good image, very solid composition, beautiful shot. So this next shot is from Barb. A uh, beautiful time of night to photograph the Milky Way. I actually like it when you get that, you know, kind of subtle gradient in the sky from, you know, the remaining hours of sunset. Actually, this would be a sunrise, I believe. Really like that time because it's not, you know, your typical night scene. It's got that nice color. It's kind of like photographing a sunrise and the Milky Way all at the same time. I really like that. Post-processing wise, I think it's good. Although we have blocked up our shadows a lot, I would like to see a little bit of shadow information there. But I think my biggest critique is going to be something that I, I find myself saying a lot during night photos, is that, you, that just having a Milky Way and just having a night sky over the top of a scene isn't enough. You always need to make sure that your sky is only complementing your composition. A lot of people tend to just kind of point the point their camera up at a night sky and call it good. But remember that composition still matters regardless of what sky you put above it. It doesn't matter whether it's a big colorful sunset or the night, you know, a Milky Way image. You need to make sure that the composition below the horizon is still a strong one. So if you envision this shot with, you know, just middle of the day, 
would you be happy with this composition? I'm, I'm guessing you would maybe not. Just because there's not a lot going on. We do have the nice reflections of the water, but I think that this composition below the horizon could be a little bit better just to just to complement the beautiful sky we have. That that would be my critique, is I'd like to see a slightly more interesting composition below the horizon. Next shot is from Mark, and wow, that is a striking image. What so what I love about this shot is that you have, you know, not only really interesting. Uh, landscape going on we have the beautiful shadows raking across the scene but it's all broken up by that hot air balloon I think my biggest critiques for this image would be that you know maybe the white balance is a little bit to the green side you know there's a lot of cyans and kind of greenish tones going on so I would nudge that just a little bit over to the right in the tint department I'd like to see just a little bit more magenta worked into the shot and the the overall i guess not aspect ratio but just the framing of the shot the bottom hills down here to the right they're just barely being cut off anytime you have an object that's over to the edge of the frame it's awkward if they're just barely cut off i would rather see them cut right down the middle than almost be there but not quite it's like an ocd nightmare if you almost have the entire little hill included but not quite so i would actually crop in from the right and crop a little bit deeper into the shot and which would bring the visual interest further over to the left and i think that is going to work a little bit better for this shot really beautiful shot i'm assuming this was taken from a hot air balloon i'm jealous really cool next image is from cornelia a uh, beautiful astro shot. I really love, you know, I love that we have interest below the horizon. That's kind of one of those things that I talk a lot about. We definitely have that with these really striking mountains. And the Milky Way is supporting the scene rather than is the scene, if that makes sense. So my critiques for this shot would be, I don't know if this is light painting or if it's dodging and burning up. My guess is that these trees were light painted. The, the downside to light painting is if you're unable to light paint enough of the scene to actually get, you know, an even, an even light on it. You see how these closest trees are very illuminated, but then there's this weird shadow area back behind them. And then over to the right, it's like 100% lost into shadow. What I would like to see, and I know it's not one of those things that you can easily go back and redo, but I would like to see all of these shadow areas illuminated with some kind of light painting or no light painting at all. It's really a challenge to to shoot scenes like this when you have, you know, bright light painted areas and then dark shadow areas. You can't ever really equalize the equalize those afterwards. So maybe you're better off doing just a twilight blend where you take a shot during blue hour, wait a couple hours and then take the shot again when you have the Milky Way. That way you have the shadow information from that blue hour. Or you can just try to do like a three and a half minute exposure and try to get your shadow information that way. Sometimes light painting is just so uneven that it just doesn't work. One of my favorite things to do, and it's not legal everywhere, I don't know if it's legal anywhere, but I'll, I'll actually strap a light to my drone, fly it, you know, a couple hundred feet up in the air and just subtly illuminate my foreground it mimics moonlight, but we still get the nice dark uh, sky so we can get the Milky Way in addition to that. So if you're in an area where you, it's legal to do such things, that's an option as well. But what I do love about this shot is the way that the mountains are, you know, very distinct and illuminated, but we have that nice Milky Way. So this forest scene is from Andrea and I love the conditions. I love these misty forest scenes. I wish that we got more of that where I live. I like that the dominant tree is kind of leaning into the shot and we get these overhanging limbs kind of overhanging the shot a little bit. Um, I think color is really my, my only critique here. I don't know if we could maybe harmonize the color palette a little bit to make it a little bit more cohesive. Let's give it a try. Let me, let me show you what I'm thinking. So obviously working with a JPEG is never as good as working with a RAW file, but let's give it a try. So I'm just gonna open this up in Adobe Camera Raw. First, let's duplicate this layer. Open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm just gonna go into the HSL panel here. 
and I'm gonna try to make these greens and the yellows just a little bit more together and cohesive. So I'm gonna take the yellows and push them a little bit towards green and then take the green slider and push it towards yellow. What the aquas are doing here, I'm gonna take the aquas and push them a little bit towards blue. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna create a little bit more color separation between our greens and our mist, but we're going to make these, these leaves a little bit more of a similar color. That way they're not quite so different. There's not, there's not a million different shades of green. There's just like a couple different shades of green and yellow. Also gonna try just warming it up just the tiniest bit, something like this. So we'll go before, notice down here in this foliage how many different shades of green and yellow there are. And then after, you see that we pretty much are only left with the darker greens and the yellows. So I actually might prefer the, how kind of blue and sad the mist was in the background. Just remember that one of the things that you can do to eliminate distraction in an area, especially you know forest scenes and, and foliage areas, is by making all of the colors a little bit more harmonious, uh, it can eliminate distraction. But beautiful shot, beautiful conditions. So this next shot is from Edu. Am I pronouncing your name right? <laughs> See, this is why I left my uh, left the names out of the last videos because I butcher more names than I get right, and I'm sorry. Um, Edu. Uh, beautiful shot. I really love the water movement we have going on. I like the moment with the light peeking through, the combination of the incoming wave interacting with the rocks, and then that background wave curling. Um, critiques for this shot would be that I feel like maybe we're getting a little oversaturated in our water with the blue tones. A lot of times that just happens from A, starting with a pretty cold white balance, and B, adding too much contrast to the water area. So maybe we could fix that just by warming it up a little bit. Also, we have a lot of sky up above and I'm not sure that it's all adding to the shot because really from above this cloud bank, the sky starts looking pretty, I don't know, pretty boring maybe. So maybe by cropping out a, a slight crop, we could make the shot a little bit more impactful. Um, let's open this shot up in Photoshop and just see what it looks like if we warm up that white balance. So we're going to just go up to Adobe Camera and see how it looks if we add just a little bit of warmth into the shot. Also going to bring down the exposure just the tiniest bit. Hit OK. Before you see we got very blue water. After the water is a little bit more neutral and as we make the water a bit more neutral, we're starting to notice some of the color variation in the water. So before, it, it just kind of looks like a wash of electric blue. But after, we're starting to get some warm highlights on that water. And I think those warm highlights mixing with the water is a good thing because it starts to give you some color variation and the stuff that you can embellish and work with a little bit. Also, let's play around with a slight crop. We just crop in leaving a little bit of room around this edge, eliminating some of that sky. Just by cropping in a little bit on the shot, it, it fills the frame a little bit better with, with some of the more interesting stuff. And then other things that I'm noticing is we have some water spots here. So we got one here, one here, one here, one here. You're gonna have to work at getting rid of those. Also, one of the things that I like to do in a lot of shots where I'm shooting directly into the sun is I like to do a little bit of dodging just around our light source. So I'll grab a new layer, change the blend mode to soft light, grab the color that's happening around the sun, slightly less saturated, and with a fairly low opacity, just start adding a little bit of that around our light source. It just kind of mellows out the harsh contrast that's happening in that area and gives this sense that the, the light is glowing, you know, emanating from the sun rather than it's just a point of, of bright, colorful light. We could also take the same kind of approach to the sky to darken it down, just to help the eye come down just a little bit. And we could try to recover some of the highlights 
down in this water. I'm just looking at the water for this adjustment and just dim those down just the tiniest bit. Doesn't have to be too much. Put that layer inside of a group, grab a white paintbrush and just bring that effect in just a little bit. What I'm attempting to do here is to create a visual path that's going to lead kind of deeper into the shot. If you have really bright highlights close to camera, the eye is going to struggle to get past those. So if we go before, very electric blue, very bright water, kind of bright, bright highlights everywhere. And after we've recovered some of those highlights and the tonal contrast has kind of been mellowed out just a little bit because I felt like the contrast was just a little bit overboard before. So before, after, just trying to get the viewer's eye to go a little bit deeper into the shot. A beautiful job with the moment, with the water movement, uh, beautiful conditions. I think you've got a lot to work here with. Uh, just maybe go in and kind of fine tune the processing a little bit. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. I have used Squarespace for my website since the very beginning. Squarespace not only makes it incredibly easy to build a portfolio website, but it also makes it incredibly simple to create an e-commerce website. So I not only use Squarespace for my images, but I also use it to sell my workshops. The e-commerce that comes with Squarespace is incredibly powerful and incredibly easy. So now is the perfect time to build a website. To do so, just go over to squarespace.com forward slash Nick page. You can start your 14 day free trial and if you decide to upgrade, you can use Nick Page at checkout and that's gonna get you 10% off your first purchase. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This next image is from Stefan. Really beautiful conditions. I really love the, the subject matter with these three trees and I think the composition works pretty well as well. I think the, the biggest critique I have for this is going to be the fact that we've used a longer shutter speed to kind of blur out some of that, that water. But the unfortunate part of that is that we're also blurring the, the blowing leaves and limbs. So the way that you could combat this when you're shooting in the field is going to be to do what I call shutter speed stacking. So we can take that longer exposure. So we're getting that movement in the water, but then you need to get a faster shutter speed that way we can freeze the action in those limbs. So the way that you would do that is you would speed up your shutter speed to at least probably a hundredth of a second, it depends on how fast the wind is blowing. And you'd count how many clicks it takes you, how many stops it takes you to get to that shutter speed. So if it takes nine clicks with your shutter speed dial to get to that shutter speed, you need to compensate with a combination of nine clicks between ISO and aperture. So if you're stopped down to F16, you could open up to F8 and then do the remaining clicks with your ISO and then take that shot and you'll end up with two shots that have completely different sets of settings, but are the same exposure. And then you could blend those together in Photoshop. I'd also like to see what this looks like, just slightly darkened down that way the highlights that are happening in that sky are just a little bit more impactful. Remember that highlights in order to be impactful have to have shadows around them. Otherwise it's just bright on bright. And that's kind of how I feel about that sky right now. It's just highlights on other highlights. So it's not quite as impactful, but if we were to darken down that sky, those areas of highlight would become very impactful, but beautiful shot really like the composition and the subject matter. So this shot, this is a good example of how having highlights surrounded by shadow makes the highlight more impactful. Look at how much more impactful the highlights are in the sky in this shot than they were in the previous shot. I really love, you know, all of the different elements going on here. We have interesting light. We have the sun very close to uh, close to that tree. And then we have these beautiful ripples in the foreground. I think my biggest critique is just going to be the, the framing of the image. We have the horizon line pretty much directly in the middle of the frame here. And I don't think that the top portion of the sky is really adding much to this shot. I think that if we just cropped out a lot of that sky and zoomed in on the bottom, you know, two thirds of that shot, it's going to fill the frame with the best elements. To me, the best elements are these beautiful ripples that really in, intense, impactful light and then the beautiful silhouette of that tree. This shot has a lot of potential, beautiful shot.
This next image is from Apostolos. Did I say that right? I am a butcher of names. Beautiful image. I really, I really like the, you know, the unique aspect ratio that we're using to really emphasize the length of the Milky Way. You've done a really good job in post-processing, bringing out that Milky Way. Maybe we're a little bit on the blue and purple side of the white balance spectrum. I mean, it's, you know, it's a personal taste thing, but it does feel just the tiny, tiniest bit too cold. You might think about warming it up just a tiny bit. But again, the my biggest critique for most night sky images is what is below the horizon. If we look below the horizon, we have a light source of some kind and then just, you know, a dark mass. And I, this same shot with maybe an isolated silhouetted tree against that sky or just something of interest is going to take it from a, a beautiful shot of the Milky Way to just a beautiful shot all the way around. When you're doing night photography, always make sure that you have a composition that would be strong even in the daylight. A lot of times we, we tend to get a little bit lazy with our, our night, Im night, night sky image compositions. Make sure that whatever is below the horizon is a good shot regardless of the time of day. That sky is meant to complement the foreground, not make up for the lack of it. But I really like the way you've post-processed it. I love the, the unique aspect ratio. Thank you guys so much. Remember again that, you know, this is the opinion of one person. Art is a personal thing. There's no right, there's no wrong. I'm just one guy spouting off a bunch of opinions. And hopefully some of this has been uh, constructive in some ways to not only the people that submitted the images, but the people watching this video. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.